Hi, this is Charles Kelly. Happy New Year to you. Well, the news is today here in, in the UK is that the chair of NatWest Bank, Sir Howard Davis, has claimed that uh, in an interview, he said that buying a house in the UK is not that difficult. I, I just can't believe he said this. This is a guy uh, who earns £763,000 a year. Yeah, £763,000 a year. And he, he's trying to lecture to us that Oh, buying a house is not that difficult. You've always had to save to buy to, for a deposit to buy a house. I, I really just can't believe he said this. Uh, it's caused outrage in the UK, particularly amongst uh, organisations like Generation Rent and all the millions of people who are trying to save for a deposit amidst uh, soaring rents. Rents reaching rentals are, are reaching record levels. Uh, cost of living crisis, inflation, food inflation. Uh, electricity bills and gas bills at record highs. Uh, it, it's unbelievable that this guy could come out with this. So Howard Davis is a, is, is a kind of a, like a career consultant stroke, civil servant stroke, chair of Quangos and, and large companies. Uh, as, as far as I know, he's never run a business in his life, uh, probably never had to struggle. He, he's been with companies like McKinsey. He was uh, deputy governor of the Bank of England. Uh, uh, I think he was a chair of an insurance company and the, the financial uh, services or financial conduct authority. He was he was chair of that. So he just jumped from job to job. He's part of the really the the, the financial elite and, and trying to tell us this. Don't forget, this is also the, the banking group that uh, debanked someone you might never heard of him, uh, Nigel Farage in the UK. Uh, and of course, Nigel Farage has got quite a big following and a TV show on GB News. And and he, he went public with this. He was debanked. Uh, he had a Coots bank account. Coots is owned by NatWest. And Nigel was debanked uh, last year. And he went public with it. And and the, the, a further, this, this scandal goes on further because lots of other people come out of the woodwork and said, yes, I've been debanked as well uh, for, for no apparent reason. But it turned out that with, with Nigel, it was because of his political views, which are, you know, conservative right wing, I guess, uh, former UKIP uh, head who uh, w was responsible perhaps for pushing through Brexit and bringing that Brexit, uh, you know, to, to the fore. Um, anyway, uh, the, 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 the chief executive of NatWest, I can't remember her name, but she then spoke to a, a journalist and said that the reason he was uh, debanked was that he didn't have a million pounds balance in the Coots account. Now, this is a, a breach of data protection. I don't think she got fined or anything. In fact, she was let go with a multi-million pound uh, golden handshake, a goodbye, thank you very much, which uh, that caused public outrage as well. And eventually they, they took it back off her. But it's, it just seems like these people just jump from job to job to job. It, it's almost like the old boy network, jobs for the boys. And, and I'm outraged uh, by this, but uh, there you go. Look, I want to talk about some good news. Um, average fixed rates are coming down a bit. Uh, we, we see that um, according to money facts, and we've had a sub 4%, but according to money facts, the average two-year fixed rate this week stood at 5.83%. And the average 5.5-year deal was 543 according to money facts. But we've seen some lower rates than that. Of course, it depends on the amount of deposit you got, uh, your own financial, you know, individual circumstances. Other things that Halifax uh, say that mortgage rates and, and, and the decrease of mortgage rates and are just starting to uh, boost buyer confidence. And we've seen a little bit of buyer confidence, more uh, people putting their properties on the market as the new year comes in. But that, that's pretty much normal anyway. Uh, they've added that house prices rose for the third month in a row to an average of £287,000 in December. Uh, but it's forecasting a fall this year. Uh, surprisingly. Now, their data shows actually that the, the, the house prices over the year rose by 1.7% and month on month in December by 1.1%. And Halifax is the UK's biggest mortgage lender. Now, it's, it's, it has its own figures, right? It's, it's only basing it on its own, its own lending, doesn't include other lenders, obviously. It doesn't include buy-to-let deals and people who buy with cash, right? So, But their figures are showing a slight rise last year, which is good news. Um, and, and so we, we will see how things go. Bank of England figures show that the number of mortgage approvals rose slightly in November. So that's a bit of other good news. But my own um, anecdotal evidence, I guess, if you like, is I'm speaking to a lot of people who had their properties on for months. One guy I spoke to, he's, had his, he's been trying to sell his property for two years. And, and he lives in a nice area near the, the Warner Brothers studios in the Watford area. And, and it's, it's a nice area. And he's been trying to 
downsize. And it's not a multi-million pound property, by the way. He's been trying to downsize to, to a property, uh, you know, and, and this has been going on for two years. He had a buyer dropped out. Um, he's, he's put it on the, he's reduced prices, all the rest of it. Can't sell it. Uh, he's had it on with different agents and, and, and so on. He just can't sell it. I've had other people had properties on the market for much of last year and, and unable to sell it, not even getting buyer inquiries. That, that's what's happening. So my anecdotal evidence is not as all good news as, as you know, the likes of Zupra and Right Move and the Halifax would tell you. Um, it, it's, it's pretty bad news for a lot of people. Uh, I also want to talk about the, the, the rise of asset values in, in relation to earnings and, and cash. Because this is a, a long-term serious uh, problem. Uh, now, we know that um, it, over time, if you, asset prices will uh, rise, and you know, most asset prices anyway, earnings prices are falling behind uh, the rate of inflation. Now, assets like uh, property, um, uh, gold and silver, and stocks and shares over time have risen against inflation. Uh, so there is a, there is a, there's a tax cut coming in the UK. National insurance will drop very soon from 12 to 10 percent. Uh, the chancellor, uh, I saw his uh, good news, you know, good, good news, something to celebrate, he said. But, you know, all right. So they've got people get a tax cut of a few hundred pounds a year, but their cost of living has, has gone up enormously. So I don't think many people will be celebrating this year. Um, so uh, let, let, let's see. But I, I think most people are still suffering and of course, we've got January coming in now where people are starting to realise that the amount of money they spent on their credit cards at Christmas has to be paid back. So this is the time of year when people have the least amount of money uh, to spend traditionally. Uh, now, of course, earnings and cash savings have been falling behind asset prices for years, for decades, for hundreds of years. And these include assets like stocks and shares, gold and silver, property. And I want to put something up on screen. I know you can't see this if you're listening on um on, on Spotify or iTunes, but I'm going to put a graph up and you can see this on, if you look on my YouTube channel, Charles Kelly Money Tips Podcast, or on my website, moneytipsdaily.com. But, you know, asset prices have been falling way behind uh, property for, for a number of years. And I've got a little graph here. Um, you know, asset, house prices since 2000 have risen by 240%. Earnings in the UK have only risen by 112%. So, I mean, since 2000, that's 25 years nearly, uh, earnings prices have, have risen 100%. So that's pretty bad, isn't it? And, you know, if you think about uh, cash and, and what you could do with cash, say, in, in the year 2000, if you, like me, you can go back even longer, you think about what, say, £10 would buy, having a £10 note in your pocket or, or, or £20 note in your pocket, it would, you know, where would it go in, in those days compared to now? Even if you're young and you think, what you could do with 20 pounds you know, 20 years ago or, or in 2000 compared to what it buys now. Of course, it's nothing because it, inflation is eating away at your capital. It's eating away at your savings, uh, especially if you've got it in, in bank deposits and, and, and or in cash, God forbid. You know, whereas things like gold, silver uh, assets, if you've got your money invested in, in, say, a tracker fund in the stock market, um, you, you can see quite good average returns on, say, the S&P 500 uh, over the last 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, and you could see very good returns if you've had your money in property, uh, but not if you've had your money in a bank and you're trying to save for a deposit because the price of the house is going up faster than you can save. And, and that's the reality. So if people have, you know, I, I met people who dithered around for three, four, five years looking for the right property and were always a bit fussy. And, and then they found that, you know, prices were running ahead of them and, and they had to then settle for maybe a two bedroom house instead of a three bedroom house or a flat instead of a house. I've seen a lot of that because, you know, you just can't keep pace with with um, with with the rising costs. Now, having said that, I think asset prices will come down in 2024, particularly property and, and stocks and shares. Gold, I don't know. Gold could uh, go up in, 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 in economic uh, turmoil. It usually does. Uh, and it usually does as, as interest rates are right. It certainly has been over the last couple of months. And in the next week or so, I'm going to have a gold expert come on and talk to us about uh, the history of gold, the prospects for gold and silver and precious metals over the, over the next few years. No one can predict things for certain, but I, I would certainly rather have my money in assets like uh, precious metals and, and the stock market and property 
rather than having it in cash uh, and and uh, in 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 the bank sort of thing. Now another thing to watch out for is that uh, a shadow bank in China has filed for bankruptcy. This is a sixty four uh, billion pound bankruptcy, and and it, it might sound insignificant, you know. What, what's one bank in China amongst hundreds of them? But this is the shadow banking system. And shadow banks are the banks that operate outside of the regulated banking industry and have fueled a property boom in China. In China, property accounts for a third of its uh, GDP. So it's quite big. And, and we've had companies like Evergrande and other major property developers fall into trouble in the last couple of years. They haven't gone bust yet. But, you know, we're, we're seeing a bit, some cracks appearing in, in the Chinese economy. Uh, there was a documentary I was listening to the other day where it said that a lot of students who've, who've graduated were told by their parents, study hard work and you'll get a good job and that's sort what of, are unable to get good jobs. And they're now doing manual types of uh, jobs that, you know, uh, are not uh, uh, congruent with the, with, the, with the degrees that they've got, sometimes master's degrees and, and you know, they're working in, in fast food and, and so on, uh, which they could have done without the degree. Uh, so th there's some cracks appearing in the Chinese economy. China, China's economy is the second largest in the world. And, you know, I, I think we could see some some trouble ahead there in, in China. So I, I guess that's all I wanted to say for now. I, I hope this, this year is a good year for you. There'll be opportunities, uh, whether, whether you're in uh, as an investor, a stock market investor, a property investor, you know, falling prices always lead to, to opportunities. So, so do watch out for that. And just be ready for these things, you know, be ready for these things. Try and pay off your consumer debt. If you can get rid of that and always have three to six months of savings in the bank so that you're covered if there are problems, if you if you do lose your, your job and, and that sort of thing. Of course, we hear figures in America that the job market is, is strong and there's more jobs being created. But are these real jobs? I mean, if someone is fired from a bank and the banks and lenders in, in America have, have have, have made huge redundancies in the last year, as are some of the tech companies. So are they going to get the same jobs as they got? No, they're probably going to be flipping burgers. And, and yet yeah, there'll be these new jobs created at lower pay, but it, it's not the same. It's not, you know, the, the figures can distort the real uh, facts going on in, in the economy. So I, I would watch out for that. Another thing to mention is that Eurozone inflation rose, as did German inflation. So inflation is not going away. You've, you've got to, to get to grips with you know, how you invest your money for the long term. And that's why I run free webinars, uh, uh, usually on a Wednesday night, talking about how you can you know, grow your money, become financially free and get to, to grips with your, your finance, get, immediately get control of your, of your finances. So thanks very much for listening. Uh, this is Charles Kelly, Money Tips. I will see you again in the next podcast. Thanks very much for listening. I do appreciate your, your likes, your shares and your comments. Even if you don't agree with me, do make a comment. Thanks very much. Bye for now.